Welcome back, guys. Today's video is something really fun, I think at least. It's a pantry remodel. And I don't know about y'all, but I hate these wire shelves. I mean, you can't get things to stand up straight on them. They just fall into the cracks and it's just bad. So I decided to do a cheap and temporary remodel using things found at the Dollar Tree, namely foam core and contact paper. I also added a hobby knife and some uh, packing tape from the Dollar Tree, but I'm not gonna count those. So to start with, I had to measure the shelves. I got the width of each shelf, the depth of each shelf, and the uh, size of the little area in front, because we're gonna cover that up as well. And then we just went to the uh, foam board and laid out all our measurements and cut the foam board. And that's what you're gonna see now is me cutting out one of the shelves. Now I'll repeat this process for each of the five shelves. So depending on your pantry, if you decide to do this, you might need more than uh, five pieces of foam board. Uh, I was able to get everything I need for one shelf out of one piece of foam board. And then the contact paper, I actually had to buy an extra roll of contact paper because each roll of contact paper only would only cover the large part of the shelf and not the little overhang part. So I had to get an extra roll for the overhang. Now when you're cutting your foam board, it's a good idea to make shallow passes like that, uh, to make multiple passes, and then you can just flip it over and cut through the paper on the back side. And there we go. So we have both of our pieces. I had to use two pieces for the shelf part of it, and I did have to cut one of the pieces down because I just had to cut it to get it to fit. So then we take our contact paper and roll it out and cut it down to size, and it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you just cover the foam core, or foam board, in contact paper. So you'll see me filling it off here and then just laying it down. One thing that you can kind of see and you'll really see it later, when, be careful when you're laying your foam, um, foam board down that you get it as flat as you can. Because you'll probably have some air bubbles but you can see the creases on the side there. Uh, once I get this paper on there and flip it over, you'll really see it. There are some really, really bad lines uh, because I, I was rushing through this one. And uh, you can see my little helper in the top left. He, he wanted to help. Uh, you also don't have to cut the corners like that. Uh, for me, I found it easier to get it to, to line up and just look better. So you just fold over the sides to get it to stick. And you could place some packing tape on the seam on the back. Uh, I didn't bother with it because these were laying flat. And you also, if you have lines in the back, it doesn't matter. And there you see the, the really bad air bubbles. Normally, you could just take your hobby knife and just poke it to get the air out and rub it flat. But you can tell with these, it's not, not happening. They're too big. Uh, and that's just because I was rushing. I didn't get it flat enough. You'll see these smaller ones here. You can some of them you can just rub them out, but others just poke a hole in it, rub it out. It'll be nice and flat. So then the last little leftover piece from making the shelf, uh, I make the marks and we'll cut two pieces from this, and these two we'll put together to make the little overhang in the front.
once we have these cut out all the way, I just pull off a little bit of tape and put it over that seam just to hold them together. This is what I was saying you could do with the larger pieces, but I didn't really find it necessary with those. Uh, since these are so much smaller, I did put a piece of tape on them to hold them together until I could get the contact paper over them. It just gives it a little extra support. And so now with this last roll of contact paper, I was able to get all five of these on there at the same time. So just like with the larger shells, I've laid them out, I cut the contact paper to fit, and then I just laid them on there, and these I was a lot more careful with. I, I did them a lot slower so that I didn't have as many air bubbles. And really, since these are a lot smaller anyway, since they're a lot thinner, you're probably, uh, you're hopefully not going to have trouble with air bubbles. But you will still see the little crease between the two pieces, uh, but it's not, it's not too bad. So you just kind of space them out as evenly as you can. And then I just grabbed my hobby knife and did sort of the same thing. I cut out the little sections around it so that I could flip over the ends of the contact paper. And then the same thing over here, and you'll notice one of these is longer than the other four because I got my measurements wrong on the others. And it still looks okay once I get it in, but it's, uh, yeah, I wasn't too happy with myself. Uh, so remember, whenever you're doing something like this, make sure you get your measurements right. Uh, the saying is, measure twice, cut once. I uh, measured plenty of times, but since there were a few days between filming this video and when I made the first first few shelves to get ready for this little remodel I had the measurements wrong in my head so I should have measured again just to make sure I had the right ones but that's how it goes sometimes so we just fold up as best we can and that will make the bottom part or the front part of our shelves Now's when the packing tape really uh, has its main use. And this is to connect that front little lip part to the main part of the shell. So basically this tape is gonna act as a hinge. And, and you could just put one long strip of tape on there. I ended up doing a lot of small strips, uh, mainly because the kid was asleep at this point. He was taking his nap and pulling that tape off was very loud. Uh, I will say I probably wouldn't use Dollar Tree tape for this again because it seems really thin and yeah, it was just a pain to get off. But once you get your tape on there, uh, the front part will just kind of flap down. We'll see that in a second. So there you go. The front part bends down and you have what looks like a shelf. So then comes the fun part of cleaning out the pantry. We've got all the little shelf covers, I'll call them. We have all those made. So then we have to take everything out. And I will say there, there was a lot of stuff in there that needed to be thrown out, and I did throw a lot of it out. So that alone helped uh, make the pantry look a lot better. So once we get everything out, it's time to put the shelves in. And I noticed putting this one in here that it was really tight on this bottom shelf. It didn't really want to fit. So I just found another shelf where it would would fit. And uh, that that next bottom shelf there, it was uh, it was a little problematic with, actually it was the bottom shelf, it was a little problematic here too. So I ended up having to switch out another one, but overall they ended up fitting fairly nicely. And the one with the really bad wrinkles in it uh, ended up going on the top. So no one would ever see it. And there you go. Looks pretty good. 
You can still see the wire shelves on some of them, but overall I thought it looked pretty good. And then we have to put everything back in there. And like I said, I did throw out all the old stuff and, and everything, but now having a flat surface and not having those wire shelves, I don't have to worry about cans falling over or other bottles or anything like that or things falling through the little slits. Everything sits up there just nice and even and it looks so much better. So now we have the before and the after. And I have to say, I think it turned out really well. Uh, for a cheap temporary solution, I think it's just absolutely fantastic. And this thing costs less than $15 to do all of this. Uh, I do eventually want to put real wood shelves in here and redo the entire pantry. But for now, I'm very happy. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.